While researchers have been searching for other planets for many decades, it is already clear today what distinguishes us from the other satellites in our solar system. Water. As the source of all life on Earth, it was water that ultimately played the decisive role in the development of intelligent species on the planet. But how did the so important water actually come to our planet? After all, in terms of history, for a long time the Earth was no different from the Moon or the other rocks in our solar system. With every discovery of similar planets in space, new theories emerge. But in the meantime, scientists agree that they have found at least two plausible theories for the origin of water on Earth. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. The development from the protoplanet to today's planet Earth. Let one thing be said in advance. Both the issues surrounding the formation of our planet, our solar system, and the moon, and the question of the origin of water on Earth have of course not been conclusively clarified. For many years, they have been the center of research by many of the world's brightest minds. Nevertheless, some progress has been made in recent years. The discovery of other planets in space, which have at least similar conditions to those on Earth, is particularly helpful. And one thing is clear. If one should come across a planet with an intact atmosphere and water, the chance for intelligent extraterrestrial life would be quite high. In order to understand how the theories work, it is first necessary to take a look at the current state of research into the origin of the Earth. How old our planet is is still disputed. The scientific consensus, however, is that about 4.5 billion years ago, the planet was formed into the way it is today. At this time, the Moon is also said to have been formed. Although the planet already existed at that time, it was the presumed event with the exoplanet Thea, which in the end formed the world as we know it today. In addition, according to one theory, it is supposed to have been the reason why the required amount of water could be brought to the Earth. The Difficulties in Research on the Origin of Water In general, there are several approaches to how water could have originally found its way to Earth. There is no question that some form of water has always been present on the Earth. The decisive difference, and therefore the biggest problem in the theories, is the quantity. Today, as is well known, whole oceans cover the planet, but at least at that time sufficient water was needed for the first living beings to develop in the form of multicellular bacteria. This critical quantity has to be proven in the models, otherwise the theory can't participate in the question. And this is exactly where the first approaches fail, which were already put forward as a theory some years ago and now considered, in the scientific debate, outdated. Number 1. Water was present in the foundations of the planet. One of the oldest theories on Earth is that water was already present when the planet was formed. It was formed in the form of gases during its formation, so to speak, and eventually enclosed itself in the rocks that once formed the liquid lava surface of the Earth. In later years, after the formation of the atmosphere and the cooling of the Earth's surface, they are said to have finally emerged from the Earth's core into the world through the active volcanoes on the Earth's surface. The resulting water vapor was processed in the atmosphere and finally formed the first volcanoes. All in all, the theory seemed to be conclusive until new findings about the origin of the Earth were gathered. In the meantime, it is also clear that the so-called wet accretion makes several holes in the conclusions. Also, for example, the question about the critical quantity is pending. How can so much water have been stored in the rocks that in the end, whole oceans could be formed from it? There is also the question of how this water could survive the event of the formation of the moon. At this point in time, it can be assumed that a considerable part of the Earth's surface was completely destroyed and the Earth was reduced to its core for many hundreds of thousands of years. All the water that would have been stored during the formation of the planet would have evaporated during this event. Number 2. Water came to Earth from space. The currently accepted theory deals with the probability that the water was brought to the planet by an extraterrestrial source. And even if it sounds that way, it does not of course mean that aliens were responsible for the creation of the water on Earth. Instead, 
The theory deals mainly with the first thousands of years after the formation of the Earth, probably before the planet had formed its protective atmosphere and at a time when the surface was being formed. There are also different approaches to how the critical limit of necessary water could have been created. For many years it was believed that prehistoric bombing was responsible for the creation of water. In the early years after the formation of the planet and the origins of our solar system, there were considerably more asteroids and meteorites that crashed into the Earth. In fact, it seems that the Earth was almost permanently hit by other celestial bodies for many thousands of years. These are said to have carried a large amount of water in their mass and thus may have been responsible for the creation of water on Earth. In fact, this theory seems to have been refuted after intensive research on meteorites. The chemical composition of most of the celestial bodies does not correspond to the composition of the primeval water that has been researched on Earth so far. Instead, the focus has now shifted to the point in time when the Earth was created in its present form. About 4.5 billion years ago, a protoplanet called Thea crashed on the primordial planet Earth. What was probably a gigantic cosmic spectacle has changed the Earth permanently. For one thing, the Moon is said to have emerged from the debris of this collision. This was determined by means of samples taken after the Moon landing. In addition, it may well be that Thea came from another solar system and carried a considerable density of water within itself. Some experts even assume that it was a pure ice planet that collided with the Earth in this accident. After the Earth reassembled after this gigantic explosion, there was enough water on the Earth to form the planet in the way we see it today. Therefore, only the most absolutely improbable coincidences could be the reason for the water coming to Earth. And it took even more improbable coincidences for water to finally make sure that evolution would eventually bring mankind into being. If all this were true, it would not be impossible that we are in fact an absolute rarity in the universe. The Outsider Theory The Primeval Fog A new theory is that the water of the Earth came from the so-called primeval fog. It was responsible for the formation of our solar system and was composed of the most diverse substances that can be found today both on Earth and on other planets. In this theory, it would be another coincidence that in the end, the Earth was lucky enough to have enough trace elements which in the end let the water on Earth develop. In this theory, the asteroids and Thea also play a role, but they are not the only sources for the water on Earth. So here, various factors would lay the foundation for human life. And indeed, many researchers agree with this theory, study it in their own models, and are inclined to accept the connection with the other factors. All in all, it is still not certain what forms of coincidence brought water to the Earth, especially with regard to other areas the exploration of the universe is still in its infancy. Since we are not yet able to completely explore the elementary components and places of our own solar system, we do not know what happened to the other planets. Although research is certain about the state of Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, and Co., still the question arises as to why water could not form on them and why they are in the state they are today. The search for traces of water on Mars is also still an important part of the research. The first indications that water might have existed there in the past have already been made, but what happens afterwards and what saved Earth from the fate of the red planet? What do you think? Will this mystery be solved in our time, or is it one of the mysteries that can only be solved by future generations? And do you believe that the results on Mars will help us in our research? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time.